Uh, that's not good. Hi guys, sorry, I'm, I'm just busy adjusting and making things right. I wanted to uh, show you, I'm taking wine bottles, a little bit dirty, let's take care of that. And what I'm going to do is make rod and then turn around and make it into figurines. If you have any questions while I'm working, just talk to me and we'll see about taking care of that. But that's what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to start with. And I'm going to do it like, oh, even though I do have some glass rods already made up of this, of this type of glass, I'm going to start from scratch like, oh no, I don't have any glass at all. And I have to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's light it up and go from there guys <sighs> I have I have to save this I am not at work at, at the time but my bottle seemed to burst and you can explain why well that's because stress happens now what's gonna what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna do is uh, start out with a uh, flame like this, which is a bushier flame, and uh, whoops, it's sort of slipping down. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, now uh, oh yeah, I'd put them over here. Tweezers, never around when you want them. That's what I'm gonna start with. And I could also do this, is I can use this as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up this piece here. And we're going to try to just put them together lightly, cold sealed. Well, that, they are both going to do this. There we go. Something to hold on to it. It still might fall off. But this is what I'm going to do with it. Warm it in. And you gotta warm it in. You gotta. You can't just put it in the flame. You gotta ease it in. It's like throwing a frog into boiling water. He'll jump out. But if you start in cold water and you ease him in uh, until he gets the nice boil, you got frogs too. If you know what I mean. Just warm it in. Wave it over. We're using a full bottle. Well, you don't have to use a full bottle. You just use a little chunk at a time. I mean, if you've only got a small torch, why, why try to slam in a big heavy-duty uh, railroad spike when you only got a, a, a finishing hammer? Same idea with the glass. Is you just sort of, okay? You'll know that it's starting to get to the right temp when you uh, can sort of wave it in there, and you can see the edges starting to glow. And what I'm going to do here is just let it sort of melt into a, a little bit of a, well, this part here I'm going to pull off because I've already done some of this and this, this label doesn't seem to come off and it turns to ash and it screws up with the thing anyway. Hi, Ian. Again, what I'm doing is just taking 
a wine bottle. Oops, come on guys. Stay with me here. I'm going to sharpen up the flame a little bit now that it's it's warmed up. And I'm going to... Um, There we go. Throw that away. Now this is because you don't have to do a whole. Uh -huh. <laughs> it broke off, but also a melting strand kept going with it. That's interesting. Now what I'm going to do is try to put this into a blob and then stretch it out into a, a, a rod that I can use. I'm just sort of letting it fluff around a little bit. Now I'm going to start pinching it. down uh. now I'm going to stretch this out into rods I'm going to use a oh do I have a glass yeah I have a glass chunk right over here this is Touch it too, and we're going to make some rod out of this, slowly but surely. Sort of strand this into a, a rod that I will use and make figurines out of. Now what I'm going to do is, now that I've uh, made one by just using chunks of glass to show you that you can use what's available, I've got some glass rod that's already done that I'm going to start playing with to work the rest of this rod with. Hey Jim. Let it melt all in and just keep pulling gently. But from here on, I'm gonna start using the rod. As you can see, you can make your own to begin with and then work it into pieces that, rod that you can play with. And I'll set that down. And pick up this because I already have it ready to go. I make this into a nice strand. Set that one down and do one more. Put 
Okay. Now I'm going to warm that one in like I did the last one. Waving it. If you have a even a burro rod or even even soft glass, you can attach it just like I'm doing here, and it will work. You just got to be gentle and wave it in, and there's still a chance of stress happening, just like it just did a second ago. Popped right that whole big chunk out. It's almost to the point of. Okay. Let's get this going here. What I'm going to do is just twist it up into a nice blob. And this will cause a little bit more stress into the glass. But I am still going to turn it out, stretch it out into a, a, a rod that I will use. Hey, Caleb. Just keep spinning, just keep spinning. Here we go, we're going to stretch this out into a rod. Uh-huh. Let it sh stretch out into a nice strand. Oh, yeah. Set that down. Now that's not even come off. Ain't that a kick in the pants? Now, let's go ahead and uh, show you something else. Say you got two pieces of glass that you don't know whether they're compatible or not. This is called the COE test. Coefficient of expansion. Okay. If they are compatible, you layer one on top of the other like so and pull out the strand like so and if they're compatible it'll stay straight just like that now I'll show you what happens with a piece of boro real quick the reason I'm doing this is to, to let the time for the, uh, the glass to cool so that I can start working with it. And here we go again. This is boro and this is a soft glass, but you don't know what color, what this is and, and whether they'll be compatible. So you layer one on top of the other just like that again. Heat it up evenly. And start pulling and you're gonna love this now watch see it's starting to curve it's even getting worse on the curve that's that's where you know that they're incompatible because one is softer than the other hey Tracy glad to see you're watching we're going to go ahead and uh, do that test one more time and try to do it a little bit thinner this time. This is where you find out whether two types of glass are compatible. Oh yeah, this one's going to really curve. See there, it's already starting, but you can't... Look at that one. And I did that straight, and what happened? It went twang. That's when you know that two pieces of glass are incompatible with each other 
and that if you stick them together, eventually it's going to break apart right where they stick together because they don't know any better. I mean, they, they just don't work together. Okay, I'm going to... This is the glass rod that I just did a little while ago. I'm going to nip this off here. There we go. Okay, what do I want to make? I can make a little turtle. Let's do that. We'll put that to the side here. And I'm going to put this little flattener here. There we go. Like so. Now, to make a turtle, you start with a round ball. And this is going to be a land turtle. This is not going to be very big. And that's another thing about soft glass. The smaller you make it, the less chance of it stressing and cracking out and breaking on you. So make them small. Cold seal. Go down. And now I'm going to make this into a, a nice another round ball and then I'm, I'm going to flatten it to look like a, a, a derby. There we go. A little derby hat. Let's zoom in a little bit. Sorry about that. Now we're going to add four legs. And they can be different lengths. It doesn't matter. I'll show you what you have to do later. Well, in just a little bit after I put the four legs on. Okay. Now you heat up just the pads of the bottom of the legs and press. And there you go. Now they're all nice and even. Okay. I'm going to do... Of course, it's not around when I want it. So, never mind. Oh, here it is. This is going to put a little bit more of a fish eye going on here. But you'll see up closer and personal. See, you can see without having to focus too well. There we go. It's just that the the back end would be a little less out of focus. You know, I shouldn't have did that where I warmed it out so much, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. Oops. I lost a leg because I took too much time. Okay, now we got four legs. Now you add a neck. All right, Graceful. Stuff is popping all over the place. Add a head. And a tail. Break it off. And fire polish. A dolphin is another easy one. It makes her like a banana shape. I'm going to make more of a teardrop on this side. That'll be the main part of the body. There we go. You can see that's a dolphin, can't you? Of course you can. You Come on. Then the main dorsal fin. couple of front fins on this thing. Hmm. Yes, I've done it a few times. That's why I can do it so fast. It's called practice, practice, practice. And oh yeah, by the way, practice. There you go. Itch. Ah. I get glass in my hand, hot glass, and I get itches all over my face. Can't figure that one out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and let that draw down to the tail, which is basically a tip. And then do two sort of like dorsal fins back there. Hi, Tracy. I think I 
it a little earlier, but we'll see. Now, again, all you do is just one dorsal fin on that side. Or one shark fin, I guess you could say. Dorsal or shark, it looks the same. And you've got one little dolphin. Let's see, something else really quick, easy. Cat, my swan, bear, whales, no unicorn, dolphin, elephant, bear. What else is green? A fish is green. What else is green? Frog. We'll do a little quick frog. Round ball again. This is part of what I call the alphabet of shapes. That's one of the quick ones. This is a nice round ball for you. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more so I can look over it. Hey, Don. Cannabis leaf. Yeah, I know. But that's got five leaves and the frog only got a head and, a t and some legs. Hi, Lonnie. Glad to see that a few people are watching. Now you got a round ball. And you turn around and put another little round ball for the head. Like so. You could do a lizard too, I guess. Pinch it off a little bit to flatten it up a little bit. See? We got ourselves the head of a frog. Couple of eyes, one, two, and another thing about soft glass. This size, the best thing I can tell you to do is work from one end to the other and don't go back and like if you start something and then you finish it and you say, no, no, I want to try to do this again. Do it on the next one. Leave that one with a few mistakes or whatever and do it better on the next one. Don't keep going back the more you go back the more chance you add stress to the glass and again at this size yes it can stress and crack but not as easily now the back end of this guy just two legs and some feet I like the recycling glass idea Thanks, Don. Yeah, when I first started, I picked up a propane blowtorch and soda bottles. I got better. I tell you, I got better. Now, usually I do the... But for this, because I'm trying to keep it less stressful, I'm going to do the leg like a what I call a right-angle leg. We pull it out, you go forward. And there you go. On both sides. Boom, boom. And let's see if we can add two toes to each side of this. I'm working to the side of the flame. I'm not actually working in the flame to get what I want done. I'm just warming up the glass just enough to do the job that it needs to be done. Now the reason I, yeah, there you go. And again, at this size, yes, if you have an oven and you know the annealing cycle of soft glass, go for it. If not, these are just something you can have around the house. What was the next thing? Oh, li a lizard. Let's do a quick lizard, and then I'm going to call this one quits. But I will start another one very shortly. With the lizard, all you do is a pinch the head. and add some legs. I'm actually gonna kick it down a notch or two. I have a number two tip on this, this national and I'm running off my oxygen concentrator and I uh, do get quite good results even for this macro stuff.
Oops, I forgot the eyes. The quicker you get, learn to make these things and get it out of the flame, the better off you are. If you take 20 years, the more stress it could happen. As you can see, even these little toes, I'm just sort of touching it too, pulling it out. Let's do the back legs. Just a little bit further back. The soft glass is so much different to work. So much different to work. Toes. Bend them in a good direction or two. Bend that one out, and we're going to bend the whole body just a little bit to the left. I'm not trying to make a political statement here. <laughs> I'm going to heat up and bend the head a little bit to the right. Still not making a political statement. Make it look like he's moving. There we go. And now the tail. Do a little touch there to his nose and add a tail and all I do there is just do is like a sometimes I do an S curve and sometimes I do just like a C curve like this hmm. yeah props on the soft glass I can't have only tried once and it's a completely different beast yep here we go now well, we're going to the other side of the, the scale. This is like 90 or 100 and 4 or whatever, probably. I'm not sure what the, the CO, you know, that's the, and, you know, Pyrex is, is like 33. Well, now we're going to get into dun, 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 quartz. You say, what? And I said, yeah, quartz. This is some rod that I made up from beach pebbles, like this. Uh, no, that's not one of them. Darn, that's that's granite. Darn, when you want one around, it's, you can whistle and jump. And if you weren't looking for it, three of them could be right there next to your hand. Hold on. Let's see if I got one somewhere here. I don't know where some of them are. Of course, it's a little bit further back. Hold on. Well, I guess it's better to walk around the table. Hold on. Dang it. I live here in North Carolina on the East Coast, next to the beach, 20 minutes away. I can, less than 20 minutes away, I could be at the beach sitting on the beach having a good old time but these are the stones that I start with and the smaller you make it or smaller that you start with the quicker you can melt them okay I'm gonna actually try to for all intents and purposes I'm gonna try to do that one for you okay now first thing you cannot use didymium lens you have to use at least a number five welding shade. And that's just at least a number five welding shade to get started. And I'm going to try to do the same thing I just did with the uh, soft glass because the stress in this, this stuff is just as bad. You got to warm it in and keep warming it in for a little while. But once you do, there it goes, it's starting to, let's see if we can try to gently, bently do a cold seal here. There we go. Oh, there, let's see.
There we go. Still going to pop off a little bit. Yep, there it went. Dang it. You just really got to... There's some that is very, very gentle and you can play with it and put it right in there. And others, it, it's so stubborn and obstinate. You just, you got to... But, it's good stuff. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the soft glass, but again, this is a lot brighter, as you can see. You twist it up. And pull it out into a rod. Let's see, I've made a lizard, I've made a frog. Let's make a little white elephant out of this stuff. Just an elephant head. I should have kept it more round. There we are. Make sure you got good ventilation. It, if you do not, the best way to describe the smell is use stuffing your face into a sand dune. The dry, dusty, musty smell, which is probably not good to breathe in unless you got good ventilation. And I usually keep my doors open and fans blowing at all times, even in the middle of winter. I keep a heater down on my feet. There's one left ear to this elephant head. Let's do the other ear. And there we go. We'll put the loop here at the top of the head. Sort of like a question mark, and then I heat up the middle and just sort of bring it in. Now the... Uh I put a little loop here on the uh, the nose. Not really a loop, but a curl up. It's always good to have an elephant luck with you instead of again you. And I'll even put some uh, tusks. There's one. And there's the other. One thing about quartz is you can do some really nice fine detail because, you know, when you heat up a round in, with, even with boro, it sort of rounds into itself unless you've got some really, really fine plain detail going on. Uh, let's pull that off. There we go. And we have one elephant head pendant. With that, I'm going to call it quits, guys. Thanks for being there, as always. I'll come back on here and do something else after a little bit, but this is so that I can put this a little clip up on YouTube probably in a day. But uh, thanks for being there.
Carpe Vitro, and enjoy your day.